So when I started looking at WatchKit a few days ago, one thing that I really wanted to be able to do was to have a, a core data store that was shared both with the watch app and the phone app. And although I saw a little bit of talk of this on the developer forums, I didn't see any real concrete examples of, of how to get this done. So I did create a sample app and I'll walk through the creation of, of something uh, the same uh, here in this video. So we'll create a master detail application. And this is gonna be called Date Saver because that's all it does, save dates. It's gonna be in Swift and we're gonna use core data. If you had to or wanted to write in Objective-C, it wouldn't be very difficult to adapt this uh, demo for, uh, for Objective-C. I'll create that on the desktop. And now I have my application all spun up. Next thing I'm gonna do is add something a little bit more interesting, which is the watch app target. So this is obviously Xcode 6.2. It's got the watch app target that you can create. It's got a default product name. Again, in Swift, I'm gonna turn off the notification scene. I'm gonna leave the glance scene off. And this is just gonna be a watch kit, plain old watch kit. Create that. And now we have our extension with our interface controller, really simple. And then we've got our date saver watch app, which has a storyboard. So I'll go into the storyboard. And uh, again, a lot of the details of the creating the watch app itself are done really well on Apple's uh, developer website. So I'd, I'd definitely defer to those uh, directions on getting started. So the first thing I'll do is add just a tiny little bit of UI here, uh, and it's just gonna be a label. So I'm just gonna drop a label in there, stretch it out a little bit, and I'll make sure that it'll uh, scale down because I know uh, by the end of this demo, I'm gonna have a pretty long piece of text there. So I wanna make sure we can see it all. Um, so you guys can uh, see exactly what's going on. Next up uh, for the storyboard, I'm gonna connect it up with our interface controller. So our interface controller is there. I wanna take this label and create an IB outlet for that. That's gonna be called the date label. Seems like a good name for it. And really we're done now with the watch app uh, for a little bit. So the next thing that really is kind of interesting is that we've got this app delegate with a bunch of core data code. And this isn't really a good place for this core data code because what I wanna be able to do is have the watch extension call this core data code and have my phone app call the core data code. So the app delegate was never really a great place for this code to live anyway, uh, but it's really not a good place in, in this particular case. So I'm gonna delete all that. And where am I gonna put it? So that's, that's the, the important question. So what I'm gonna do is create a framework and that shared framework is gonna be a place where we put code that both the watch extension, uh, the watch kit extension and the phone app are gonna be calling into. So I'll go ahead and create that target. So in this case, it's gonna be a framework or library, Cocoa Touch framework. And here we're gonna call it a date saver kit. Seems to be the cool way to name things. Again, Swift as the language added to my project. All right, cool. So now we've got a date saver kit, really basic setup. Um, so that's looking pretty good. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna create a just a data access file uh, class, I should say, that I, I can use as a place to put the shared code. So I will go ahead and call this data access, again in Swift. Put that in the date saver kit, that looks good. Okay, cool. I'm actually gonna just kill that code because I've got it all set aside here in a little uh, macro. All right, cool. All right. So all this is is really all of my core data code that I grabbed from the app delegate. I've just put it in here. I've marked all these, all these functions as public so that I can access them from other uh, places within the application. So that looks good. And then I also made it a singleton instance just so it's a little bit easier to call from uh, both the watch extension and the phone app itself. Um, not necessary and you might have different patterns for how you wanna access your core data stuff. But this works um, or it will in a little bit. So the next, next thing I wanna do is take my date saver kit and I wanna uh, make sure that I can access it uh, from my app delegate. So that's my date saver kit. And I wanna make sure data access shared instance. That's looking good. Data access shared instance. All right, cool. So now that shouldn't be complaining of any compile errors, at least not in a few seconds. Okay, cool, we're looking good. So that uh, is a good place 
to then switch over to the next piece of uh, piece of the project that I need to put together, which is where am I going to put this persistent store coordinator? So the issue right now is that the persistent store coordinator is actually being uh, being held in a sort of default location in the applications document directory. Um, that's not going to work because that's not going to be accessible for my watch kit extension. So to solve that problem, um, I, what I want to be able to do is create something called app groups. So I went over to my capabilities tab in my date saver target and I want to create app groups. So what I'm going to do is turn them on and they're going to use my access to my development team and I've already got a group that I created. You can always create your own uh, new one but all it is is just naming a new container. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use an existing one which is my date saver documents. Okay, that's looking good. And now I want to do the exact same thing for my watch kit extension because my watch kit extension also has to be able to access this persistent store coordinator. So I'll do the same steps here, turn that on. All right, we'll call the exact same app group, otherwise they won't be able to find each other. Great. Okay, so that's all set up. Next up, I'm going to head over here and make that connection uh, real. So I want to take my persistent store coordinator. Problem here is I've got to change this core data watch to date saver, lowercase. And then a few other small things here. I want to change that to date saver. And I want to change this to date saver. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Now I can just go ahead and delete uh, some of this other code. And now I've got my application group identifier uh, pointing to the right container. And then that'll be the place where my persistent store coordinator or my, my actual data uh, file is actually going to be saved. And then both the extension and the phone app should be able to access it. So that's looking pretty good. Next up, I just have a nice convenience method that I have created ahead of time that will give us access to our uh, latest date in the data store. So it doesn't matter how many dates I've got in that list, I'm going to grab the, uh, the latest one and I'm going to return it um, to, the, uh, to the calling UI. So just a convenience method, uh, nothing really interesting to see there. So then the next step that I've got is to go over to the WatchKit extension. Go back to my interface controller, and then I have another nice convenience macro for an init method. And I'll just walk through this really quick. Uh, the init method is just to, to grab a date. So I'm calling that get latest date, that convenience method that I just spoke of. As long as the date is not uh, nil, then I'm going to set the date, uh, set the text uh, on the date label. So I can get rid of this other init because we're we found a new. A new guy now. Another important step is to actually uh, add my date saver kit, or import it, I should say. So now that I've imported that, we should be looking pretty good. Okay. So let's give this a run and uh, clean up any errors that we have at this point. Shockingly, we do not have any. Okay. So I think what we'll do. So we'll start with that. I think we, there might be one issue that we may run into, uh, but as you can see, I've got uh, some dates flowing into the phone app. So that's great. We'll uh, send that to the background. We'll kill it. And then we'll start up our watch app. I think here we might see something interesting. We actually see our dates. So we've got 237 and 11. And if I go ahead and create a new date, I am going to have to relaunch my watch app because we don't have anything fancy like synchronization happening right now. Uh, but if you see it spin up, let's check that again. 2.37.42, and that is our latest date. So you can see now that we have the core data store uh, in a nice shared location, and the, both the watch app and the phone app are pulling from that same data store and presenting information. I think Apple's guidance so far is to sort of use this in sort of a read-only manner, um, as if you have multiple writers to the same uh, core data store. Obviously, you've got to you've got to manage 
that synchronization pattern. Um, so I haven't handled uh, any of that nuance here, but at least you can kind of see uh, hooking up that data, data store so that both uh, of the applications can consume it. So I hope that helps and gives you a good uh, jumping off point to building a, a much more interesting uh, watch app of your own. Thanks a lot.